Borough meeting of Camp Historic Streetcar Inc. Let's rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge of Allegiance. Flag of the flag. And the United States of America. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God. Thank you. Before we begin on the agenda, I want to welcome our new Chief Executive Officer, Benjamin Limmer. Yeah. It's nice to have you with us. Uh, thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And there's a spot down here for you to say whatever's on your mind, but we're just Great. glad you're here. Could Certainly. You, congratulations. Uh, the first item is approval of minutes, please. Um, we have a motion and a second. second. Any additions, deletions, or corrections? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Passed. Uh, speak our system report, Mr. Allen. Good afternoon, I'm Brian Allen, director of Streetcar. Uh, for the month of March, um, on-time performance continues to be incredibly strong, 99.94%. That was only affected by two accidents, one right out here where a truck ran a stop sign in front of the streetcar and got hit. The driver was sighted in that instance, and the other one was the middle of March when a car um, ran in front of us at Morgan Street there by Emily Arena with the same outcome. Uh, during that one, though, our motorman was injured in the accident. He hurt his knee, and he's been off this whole time. Uh, he goes back to the doctor on Friday. Hopefully, we'll get him back in full after that. Good. Um, we provided 24 and a half hours of extra service for events at the Amelie. And our ridership for March was an unbelievable 99,675. Amazing. Uh, for, if, for those interested, 2018's March ridership was 34,113. <laughs> so, um, and of those, we provided uh, passage for 92 wheelchairs in the month, which is also a high number for us. That's great. That's great news. And finally, uh, we, we were able to get the Bernie car. The roof um, is on, um, but the roofing material isn't. We had to move the car off where we were working on it to get it the fall protection for some other work. So that's, that's slowed down just a little bit. So do you have any ETA on when that car is going to be ready to go? I have given them June as the deadline. Good. Good, so we'll have a little celebration that I hope Mr. Seward can certainly participate in. He's been instrumental in bringing the car here and, over, and you and he overseeing the restoration, so I really appreciate it. Uh, any questions? Any questions? I have just one question. With all the great development that's taking place in Ybor and all through downtown and some of the blocks that, are, that have the construction fencing around it, has that caused any issues with visibility? for your vehicles. I know for the cars, regular cars, they're kind of itching out a little bit. That is absolutely a cause of the Morgan Street one because now cars have to get out a little farther to get beyond the construction fencing. Okay. Uh, the city's been responding to that by doing some additional striping and that, uh, putting up bigger stop signs. So, uh, the one that happened here had <coughs> nothing to do with the construction. The driver was just oblivious okay. and he admitted to that. But we've been working with the, with all the construction around, with their maintenance of traffic and everything. And uh, you probably noticed there at Spartans Wharf, uh, they've been exceptional. They've had their own flagman out to direct people around and everything. So uh, they, they've been working well with the street. Great, thank you. Uh, question. Yes. What what has ridership been during the morning weekday hours? Oh, that's I'll another wait. report. I'll oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I'll wait. Uh, thank you very much, Brian. Uh, legal and legislative, Mr. Matthews. Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, the only thing I have is that lawsuit um, pending, right. the, pending the slip and fall that occurred over by Emily Arena. Um, our carrier counsel, the case has been referred over to our carriers. Um, counsel's handling it. They filed a motion to dismiss. They went to hearing on it last week. Uh, the motion to dismiss was granted, however, the court is going to allow the plaintiff to amend their pleadings to correct the deficiencies therein, um, which they're going to amend their pleadings to allege that we did receive notice pursuant to the statute we are coming under. Um, I, I understand that we're going to move for summary judgment and try to get out of the case, um, so that'll be coming shortly. Try and get THS out of the case. Correct. 
and when they do that, they'll, they'll, uh, they'll let us know, and uh, they're going to keep us posted, and I'll report accordingly to the board. That's all. Yeah. Any questions? I mean, is, I'm curious as to why the, the, the it isn't clearer that I mean THS as the operator is not. The, I mean, not to point the finger at the city, but I mean, I'm sure the city is not negligent, but <laughs> clearly the streetcar can't be negligent because it has nothing to do with the, the premises, correct? Or is that? Yes, I mean, I'd, I'd agree with you, but at this stage in the proceedings, we're still in the motion to dismiss stage, uh -huh. which means we're going to be looking at the four corners of their complaint, determining whether it's sufficient or not. And right now we're pointing at their lack of adequate allegations relating to notice. Here, they didn't serve THS with the statutory required notices. So we've filed a motion to dismiss saying, hey, you didn't, know, you didn't properly notice us, therefore you can't bring this lawsuit. And the court said, you're right, they didn't. And the other side, the plaintiff said, yes, yes, we did. We have to amend our complaint to sufficiently allege that we did give you the required notice. The court's going to let them do that. And then at the proper time, we'll file the necessary motion to get THS out of um, out of the lawsuit based probably on the arguments you just referred to, okay. um, although I, I can't speak for the attorneys as they're the one will be drafting and filing the uh, motion. Okay. Thank what you. are the alleged injuries to the result? There's several. There's about 350 pages worth of medical records. She basically tripped and fell over an allegedly um, uh, disrepaired uh, track and she hit her face, shoulder, neck and had injuries to her upper bodies area. So. No, I'm sorry it happened. But. Yeah, but she was okay. crossing the street on the way to a concert. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. She uh, wasn't crossing at a crossing, though, right? I believe the, the allegations suggest that she was. She was crossing at the intersection of Old Water Street and Channel Side, over there, you know, adjacent to the arena. Um, and I think the allegations do suggest that she was in the crosswalk, crossing the street, and then tripped over the. The track that was in disrepair, allegedly. There's there's nothing to trip over unless you're walking across ballasted tracks. Well, they've produced they've produced photographs of the track, and it doesn't look like it's in disrepair to me. So. Uh huh. Okay. Adam Harden, hello. Hey. Glad to have you with us. Yep. Sorry I'm late. Not a problem. Well, thank you, Mr. Matthews. Thank okay. You. Uh, Chair's report. You know, I really don't have anything in particular to report. So let's move to the CEO's report. Okay, great. Uh, thank you. I don't have a whole lot other than very excited, happy to be here, um, and to be part of this group, obviously, focusing on the Tico Streetcar Line. I've had the opportunity to work on transit systems in Cleveland, Phoenix, and Atlanta, and on all three stops. Um, the streetcar, either the existing streetcar or the streetcar that I was planning and building, played a, a very, very critical role in the development of those transit systems. Um, that's certainly going to be no different here. Um, you know, we've seen some very excellent successes with the ridership and the free fares, and looking forward to uh, continuing that momentum into the future. And then, of course, with the all for transportation opportunity, potentially um, taking the streetcar to more residents and destinations. So, um, again, very excited to work with you on that. Uh, that's probably a good segue to the extended streetcar schedule conversation which launches this weekend so I'm going to uh, call Chris Cochran and others up to the uh, mic is that it and several others several. so <laughs> Mr. Chair that concludes my report thank you very again nice to have you with us oh, before we start mm -hmm. that Ben you mentioned at the downtown partnership that we filed something with the FTA in connection with the streetcar expansion, what what has been filed and what, what what's the status on that? Sure. So I'm get, going to get familiar with the details working with the city of Tampa staff, but just high level. Um, if you intend on advancing a major capital investment project in transit, you typically submit it through the Federal Transit administration's program and it's called the capital investment grant program um, they have two different categories grant categories where you advance projects one of them is called small starts so it's for projects that are 
costs less than $300 million and are seeking less than $100 million in federal funding. Um, there's really two steps that you follow in order to get those grant dollars. The first step is called project development and uh, the streetcar extension is currently in that phase. Um, so it's on the books officially with the feds as that they intend, the city and heart intend to pursue federal grant dollars. It's a significant milestone to be in that phase because they don't, the feds don't let just anybody in. You need to uh, do a significant amount of planning and reconnaissance work. So the fact that we are officially in that phase certainly bodes well for the future. It signals to the feds that extending the streetcar is the is the top priority for for this area. So, D does that? I mean, I don't recall being having been on the heart board, us finalizing the 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 exact scope of the proposal. Is that correct? I mean, do we still have, I'd have to define? To, again, I'd have to look into the details unless Chris or anybody else can answer those questions. I would just, I would just say this is um, really, a, at the moment, it's a city of Tampa project. And so um, heart, heart is certainly involved and, um, you know, at, as it progresses, we need to prepare ourselves to eventually own that project. Um, yeah. but, but it is a city of Tampa project at this point in time. They own that contract with um, HDR. I mean. okay. Yeah, so when I have my conversations with the city of Tampa, obviously the end operator and the grant recipient conversation, we, we will be ironing out those details. So we'll be identifying answers to those questions, certainly. Okay. Do you have a question? Sure. Uh, from a historic perspective, do you have a general idea of timeline for that before it would be ready to move forward? Or No, the um, FTA doesn't have a definitive timeline on how long it can take. It depends upon the complexities of your project. A lot of times it's driven by the real estate or utility conflicts that you might have but um, but no there's no specific time frame yeah. you have to do all of your planning environmental and engineering though so it's fairly significant yeah and david and, and i know you know this too that um the the process is pretty far along but i think it's been kind of on on coast for the last few months i think that um, Mayor Buckhorn is probably going to rely on the next mayor to make some key decisions um, about alignment and f local funding. And of course, the transportation tax needs to be resolved before Tampa knows that it has any kind of match to do the project. So I'm just betting that we're looking at 2020 to get it. It'll take most of 2020 to get to the point where we know we have a project. Okay. Does that make sense to you, Ben? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a lot of work left to do, but where we are is a good spot so far. Uh, so, please. I guess I'm. So I attended the uh, rollout where you know, at, um, Julie and B Lane, where they explained the potential corridor. So I assume that that's what's before the FTA. Yeah. I guess I am. I mean, I share uh, Director Mechanic's question, which is. What is before the, what has Hart submitted to the FDA and it worked? I mean, I guess it would be nice if the board is seasoned. So well, sure. it, isn't, it isn't Hart, though. It's the city. Okay. Yeah, so w I've had conversations with staff. We are going to reach out to the city of Tampa on some collaboration type conversation and then ultimately bring forward an update. Uh, and we can certainly bring the same update working with them to both this group as well as the hard board and others as deemed appropriate. Yeah, I would like to get an update yeah, on that. And, yeah, and um, we could certainly invite HDR, who's the project lead, um, to come give us a briefing. I mean, Steve Shoecraft, as we yep. know him, and he'd be happy to come too. So we will follow up. Good. And HDR is the project lead is working for FDOT? City. 
for the city. city. Okay. Yeah, FDOT is funding pretty much funding the project, but it's really being run by Gene Duncan at the city. Okay. And he is the he's actually his boss is the technical project manager, but it's Steve's project, and and uh, he and Clarence Ang with uh, Keeling Horn are the sort of the co-project managers. So and and. To answer your question about the alignment, they basically showed two. One was up up and down Franklin and to hook over, and the other was uh, one-way pairs on Tampa and Florida, and I don't think that that's been decided yet. You good? Okay. Thank you. So where are we now? We were at... So um, kind of skip, uh, good afternoon. I'm Tyler Rowland, uh, Manager of Communications and Creative Services, so I'm kind of pitch-hitting for Vanessa right now. Good. Yeah, so we're just going to skip ahead to the marketing update, and then Chris and I are going to get into some writers. Excellent. Thank so, you, Tyler. Um, I don't know if you guys can see this. We can't hear you very well. So. Oh, I'm sorry. So the first slide. So we want to talk a little bit about the, the new 15-minute um, update. As far as we're getting a really good response from the community, um, a lot of social media posts uh, are, are going really well um, right now as far as people engaged um, with the new uh, extended service with our, with our new times and things like that. So it's, it's been uh, very well received in blogs um, and social media. Um, and then um, April 4th uh, through the 6th, um, Tampa hosted the NCA Women's Final Four. Um, we promoted a little mini marketing blitz um, to kind of help people get around town, people visiting um, from the different teams, um, encouraging them to jump on the streetcar um, and, and get around town as far as dining. Um, we also reached them through social media um, we also handed out flyers um, to our local partners and establishments. Um, we actually distributed almost uh, 200 flyers um, to different um, establishments throughout downtown Tampa and the Reward. Um, and then obviously um, we have a couple boards up here talking about the new campaign. So we obviously had to wake up with the streetcar. Uh, we're kind of evolving that into a lifestyle campaign now. Um, so we're attracting um, visitors and uh, existing patrons that are live in the area um, to come and check out the light, uh, the nightlife down at Spartan's Wharf, uh, come check out a game at Emily or um, the other different venues that we have around here, to check out the Tampa Bay History Center. Uh, so we're encouraging people to kind of use that street car, use the streetcar for that um, and encouraging the new 15 minute frequency that'll be kicking off on the 21st of April. Um, so those are kind of some quick marketing updates for March uh, that we have going on. No, that's very impressive. It's great. You're all, you're doing a great job, you all. Thanks. So I'll give you a, um, give you some updates on uh, up upcoming service change that'll start on um, this coming Sunday, the 21st, as well as um, some ridership numbers, um, some related to the morning as well. Um, starting on Sunday, we will be moving from 20 minute frequency um, to 15 minute frequency all day, every day, seven excellent, days a week. Um, so we will, uh, people will be able to, uh, to enjoy the 15 minute frequency that's become uh, very popular anytime. Um, as far as our ridership, um, as, you, as you all are, are well aware, since we, um, since we implemented the free fares, we've seen really an explosion in ridership. Um, with the exception of Saturdays, across the all the weekdays and Sundays, we're averaging about a, three, a little over 300% increase in ridership. Um, the, and Saturdays, we've, in, we've experienced about uh, one and a half times uh, the, the average ridership that we were experiencing before. So um, it's, it's been very consistent, um, uh, with the exception of the Saturday, but still. Uh, well, but uh, Saturday's uh, been free for a while, so. Yes, so it's, it's not necessarily new on Saturdays, but it's, it's still an increase, which, um, you know, like to, like to think that perhaps it's just, it's, it's uh, generating uh, more knowledge and interest in, in people using the streetcar, um, and perhaps that's why they're using it on Saturdays. Um, this is the, the background gross numbers that make up the graph that you just saw. Um, we have seen through this same period of time, through the end of March, um, uh, we're, we're approaching, um, probably by this time, we, we are probably very close to, to a half a million riders through this period of time, where we'd probably be um, about the same time last year, probably be in about the 180,000 
um, range, somewhere in there. So um, again, a, a, a huge increase in the number of people that, that we're seeing riding, um, riding the, um, the streetcar. And you can see the average, the average ridership that we're seeing is um, really impressive numbers in, in the thousands. As far as the morning, the commuter um, uh, times here, what we're seeing is consistent ridership um, through, the, um, through the weekdays and an increase in the number of riders through the hours between 6 and 11. So um, we're, we're seeing you know, pretty, pretty modest numbers between 6 and 9 a.m. and it begins to step up between 9 and 11 um, a.m. But those, again, those numbers are, are pretty consistent. We're averaging about 35 riders a day um, in the mornings before 11, which um, you know, makes up a, a pretty, pretty small percentage, obviously, of, of the, of the uh, ridership, probably in the 3 to 5% um, monthly at this point, see that we did close to 100,000 last year. So, um, but again, it's, um, you know, people are using it. Um, and, and we're, we're looking to uh, obviously uh, leverage the marketing campaign and, and getting more people out to, to um, hop, on the, uh, hop on the trolley for, for commuter purposes. And I, I think as, as Water Street continues to grow, we're gonna, we're, gonna see, um, we're gonna see more people using it down there, especially with the more residential, as um, it's gonna oh. be a little while before no, that no. happens. But. That, that'll be the game changer. You've never, you've ever worked out a deal with the city or with the uh, with Water Street developers to remote park workers in Ebor and put them on the streetcar in the morning, have you? Not that I'm aware of, um, but that certainly sounds like a, a potentially a, a, a good idea that we. Might well, it's, it's an idea that's been discussed for a couple of years, and we've really never managed to get a grip on it. So, someone should put that on their list of things to talk about. I mean. When Water Street is com is completely full blown, there will be three or four thousand workers trying to find places to park down there, and we know that's going to be a problem. So I was just I've been hoping that you and the city and the Ebor and Ebor City parkers parking lots could figure something out. Certainly, we'll um, take a look at it and, and kind of strategize as to um, yeah. I mean, how there's, we one, might there's one giant general contractor at Water Street, and that's really. You know, a big that's that's the company that would help you make that decision. I have a question about the marketing. I mean, now we have something really good to offer with with morning hours and fifteen minute intervals. What are what are we doing to target the residents in in the towers along Channel Side? You know, I mean, you got. Two or three thousand people. I mean, a, a, a lot more than thirty-four should be interested in taking the streetcar to go to downtown to work or into Ebor to work. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things we've done, we've actually started featuring some uh, consistent riders that have been using the the morning the morning service. Um, we're getting ready to do another story. We're trying to identify another um, usual commuter using the trolley to get back and forth to work who lives. Um, within that vicinity. Um, so we're trying to highlight those stories and those are really effective generally versus uh, during the social media. Um, you'll get a lot more kind of leverage for something like that where people are more engaged um, in that versus a traditional flyer being handed out and kind of um, beats on the ground and trying to promote it that way. But we have kind of highlighted a couple of people, a couple of business people that we're trying to identify that, that, that use it consistently. I mean, does it make sense? I probably sound like a broken record because I brought this up before, but uh, go to each building and have like a wine and cheese party or something like that and sure, yeah. hand out the schedules. I mean, it, they're not that many buildings. Right. Be, you know, yeah. you could you could well, cover 10 our, buildings in a couple of months, you know. Our community or engagement monthly price. Is definitely, you know, considering those things, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, something, a real direct effort where you just force people to pay attention to what you're, cause I, I just think people aren't really that aware of it you know they're just not they're not thinking about it because it, it's so I lived there and it was so easy to get on and off even before morning hours you could use it to go to Ybor or the other end of downtown and it was very convenient you know yeah 
perhaps you could even start it from the other end, which would be with the downtown office towers, offer some some kind of a surprise for a prize for whoever right. rides it the most that month or something. But yeah, you could do that through sure. the property management group. And I'm sure they'd be interested in giving their tenants a, a bonus. So that's a great idea. Any other questions? I do have one um, other question. I, sure. I'd like to make a motion for an action item that the um, that these gentlemen uh, contact the uh, general contractor for uh, um, Vinnickville and and, uh, <laughs> and for water and for wa the Marriott Waterside management as well and uh, talk to the uh, manager for the city of Tampa parking garage and see if there's some synergy with the with those three, if we could make an actual contact before the next board meeting and report back and tell us what you learned, that would be helpful. That's great. So I'll second. A we have a motion second. and a second. <clears throat> Just to reframe it, <clears throat> the general contractor really controls all everybody who's in there because they have one. <clears throat> so Water Street, the general contractor, city parking, you are the streetcar, and then on the Ebor end, the logic was there are a number of spaces um, that are completely not used during the day in this in the central Ebor garage. I mean, like a lot, like the top four floors just aren't in use. Um, and there are, are private lot operators throughout Ebor City whose lots are fundamentally empty during the day. So if if you could if we could get construction workers a deal that didn't co that didn't cost them much to park an Ebor and take the streetcar to work and at 3.30 or 4 they take the streetcar back to back to Ebor, have a beer before they <laughs> leave and go home and then all the parking lots and parking is available in Ebor for the evening which is the only time it's really necessary and that was what we were trying to do and the city has a new parking director, um, Bob knows more about that than I do but so the city's a part of it but it's really Somebody has to put this deal together, and so I think that's what what Adam is asking you guys to yep. take a run at. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say aye. nay. Thank you, gentlemen. I do have one oh, other one question. question. So I noticed on on Saturdays you have a, a ridership of about five thousand. What is the maximum that you <coughs> put on the cars right now on any given Saturday without exceeding ex you know? Uh, so we're we're hitting max ridership. We're, we're, we're leaving people at the station. Is that why you're going to 15 minute headways? That's why you're going to 15 minute headways. But that doesn't headways. really change the we're Saturday, adding more does it? Car out there okay. So we're adding more yeah, good. What will that increase it to? I, An extra 70 per ride. <laughs> That's I just want to know how long that will work before we need to start maybe, talking about adding cars. Yeah, maybe one conversation to be had is a ridership review and then sort of align that with the capacity mm -hmm. or yeah. the load yeah. factor so you can get a sense of how many passengers we're seeing at any given time. We'll obviously need to figure out if we have the data in that format, but we can certainly take a deeper dive into that to figure out where and when <coughs> certain ridership peaks are happening. Thanks. Excellent. So we passed that motion. We're good to go. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate your report. Uh, Lori Gage, I don't see her here, but do we have a vector media sales report update? She said she wasn't going to be able to make it in today, so I didn't have any information other than what she provided. Yeah, I... I, I I heard from Vanessa that she's having a problem getting Lori to come to a meeting every month, but you might mention to Vanessa that we resolve that somehow so that either we have Lori or we have a report sure. because it's valuable information about revenue. It would be good to know. Yeah, I know she's out of town today too. But. Okay, compliance reports are in your report. Um, we had, we had the marketing report. Is there any other business to come before us or any other questions of board members? If not, uh, this meeting is adjourned. And again, Ben, we're happy to have you here and we'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You.